What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're speculating about what future battery technology Tesla will announce at its upcoming 2020 battery and powertrain investor day. Everybody has been talking and thinking about what is going on here. Tesla's major advantage as an electric vehicle company is their batteries. They have the most efficient, longest range, and cheapest to manufacture batteries on the market, but that's only today. All my research points to Tesla's on the cusp of either announcing a major breakthrough in cell efficiency or manufacturing cost, um, and they're going to talk about that at 2020. So I've been spending so much time speculating about what the hell that could be. What is Tesla working on? A couple weeks ago, I put out this sort of moonshot Monday, um, guessing that Tesla might be working with John Goodenough and Maria Braga. Goodenough was the uh, founder of the lithium ion cell originally, just won a Nobel Prize actually. Well, in 2017, he put out this new piece of technology, basically this glass electrolyte um, sort of solid state next generation lithium ion cell. Um, I was guessing that Tesla might be working with him to commercialize that. Tesla has agreements with academia all the time. This is sort of how this works. You go from the lab to partnering with a battery company who tries to commercialize that technology. Anyway, I got a ton of amazing feedback about that episode. And remember, this is all speculation. Nothing I'm going to say is like a sure fact or anything. I'm just guessing and sharing my research with you. But anyway, after I put out that video, uh, one of my friends reaches out to me and says, hey, uh, Gally, saw your video. Um, let's get on the phone. This uh, friend was the shareholder of Maxwell Technologies before they were acquired by Tesla, has had many conversations with Maxwell's management team um, about the DBE technology. And in 2017, he said he actually asked Maxwell's management team about John Goodenough's breakthrough and said, hey, like if John Goodenough has this amazing new solid state battery, isn't that gonna put DBE out of business or make the DBE you're working on irrelevant? Maxwell's management team says, well, we, funny you should ask, we actually have a researcher at UCSD who's working with John Goodenough um, to help commercialize his technology with our dry battery electrodes. So remember, all speculation, but that got me thinking. I was like, wow, this seems like a really fascinating clue. Could this researcher at UCSD be the link between Goodenough, Tesla, um, Maxwell, and this next generation battery breakthrough? After a quick tweet and a quick Google, I figure out this person is, goes by the name of Shirley Meng. So Shirley Meng is sort of a legend in the battery world. Um, she got her PhD in advanced materials for micro and nano systems from Singapore MIT Alliance in 2005, um, now works at UCSD. She is a member of the uh, Electrochemical Society, um, the American Chemical Society. Um, she has gotten all these awards, I think published over 100 papers, or more than 160 peer-reviewed journal articles. Um, she has six patents. She is a powerhouse and a legend in terms of researching next generation lithium ion batteries. So I was like, okay, well now we have Shirley Meng, we have Maxwell, we have Tesla, where does this all tie together? Another quick Google leads me to this, which is the Green Car Congress article um, from 14th of September, 2018, DOE awards a 2.5 million grant to the UCSD team for work on cobalt-free cathode materials. We all know Tesla is working to get towards cobalt-free and actually leading in this. Um, the project is aimed at developing cobalt-free cathode materials for next, next generation lithium ion batteries. Shirley Meng, a professor at nanoengineering and the director of the Sustainable Power and Energy Center at UC San Diego, is the lead investigator on the project. The team includes ultracapacitor manufacturer Maxwell Technology. So now the link is real. I'm just going to read this last part to you here. Meng and her team are collaborating with Maxwell Technologies to combine the synergy between this novel electrolyte with advanced dry-coated DBE, or that's what I think they're saying, thick LNMO spinel cathodes to ultimately industrialize a completely cobalt-free, high energy density lithium ion battery for electric vehicles. That sounds to me exa like exactly what Tesla wants to announce at 2020, a cobalt-free, higher energy density, next generation lithium ion cell. Was this grant with Shirley Meng and Maxwell Technologies the start of the research of that product line? I don't know. Anyway, it gets deeper. I go to her Twitter and now I'm wondering, does Shirley Meng have a connection to John Goodenough? Well, she did tweet on October 9th, two of my colleagues in the Battery 500 Consortium won the Nobel Prize today. So happy for them in our field. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry award to John B. Goodenough and Stanley Whittingham and Akira Yoshino. So she refers to Goodenough as a sort of colleague and this thing called the Battery 500 Consortium, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. The next thing I found on her Twitter, which was really interesting, was this YouTube video, Solid State Batteries and the Future of Energy Storage, where they talk about how solid state batteries are going to be the future. Um, Shirley Meng actually put out this video with her lab, and that you can even see they have this picture here of what looks like almost exactly a Model S, and I, I know this is a Model S or a Tesla battery pack, I think, because of the four modules, with all the cells in it. It's like, like exactly how Tesla does their battery pack. And they basically say how the cooling is gonna be way better on this new technology and are giving the example of the Tesla. So I don't know if this is another clue that Shirley Meng was working with Tesla, but anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. Then 
let's bring in our boy Jeff Don from Halifax University. Tesla may soon have a battery that can last a million miles. This made a huge splash earlier this year. Um, the paper put out by Jeff Don showing extremely low battery degradation with over a, bun a bunch of cycles, um, basically enabling the million mile battery for robo taxi use, which Tesla has been talking about. So in this Wired article about that uh, battery, Shirley Meng is actually quoted. Shirley Meng, who runs the Laboratory for Energy Storage and Conversion at the UC San Diego, says many electric vehicle companies are pursuing batteries with higher nickel content than what Don Paper and Patton describe. That approach can boost the energy density of a battery. Meng says the next step is to merge those high density designs with some high performing mix of electrolytes and additives. Whether it's the formula Don's group perfected is an open question. I believe the ultimate goal of Jeff's team is to demonstrate ultra long life and high nickel content cathode, but perhaps they need a completely different mixture of the electrolyte additive cocktail, Meng says. I don't think the same formula will work, and that's why they released all the formulations. So she's basically saying Don's million mile battery has potential, but there's some sort of secret sauce that's not in the paper that they're going to need to really make this work. Is she been working on that secret sauce? I don't know how much is there a connection between the overlapping research of Shirley Meng and Jeff Don. So I did some Googling, found Shirley Meng's resume um, from 2017. She talks about previous postdocs, sort of people that she mentored and advised in her lab. Two of those people actually worked at Tesla. Um, the first one here, we have Dr. Sunny High, research group leader, Tesla Canada. Quick check of his LinkedIn profile. Let's look at this guy. Manager, cell materials engineering at Tesla. I'm a manager at Tesla that leads the team spearheading the work on the heart of the batteries, the active materials, as the head of the team leading Tesla's cathode anode electrolyte characterization and test method, I'm committed and always striving to innovate and advance our understanding so we can continue to increase lifetime, decrease cost, enable fast charge, maintain high levels of energy safety. Let's take a look at this guy moving up the ranks at Tesla. Started, wait, whoa, 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 researching in Halifax in Canada, where in Nova Scotia, where Jeff Don is based out of, um, and was working with Jeff Don, was an, moved up from senior research engineer to associate manager of cell materials engineering, now manager of cell materials engineering. So he was basically an alum of Shirley Meng, then went to work with Jeff Don, now works at Tesla, working on next generation cell technology. Wait, what about that other Tesla guy who was on uh, Meng's resume? Christopher Fell, now a staff engineer battery cell development at Tesla, the second alum from Meng's lab who's working at uh, cell development at Tesla. And he says his responsibilities include technical development and qualification of lithium ion cell batteries for Tesla electric vehicles and energy storage products from concept through production. Coordinate cross-functional development of product requirement definitions, work directly with cell vendors to validate product specifications through testing, including performance, safety, quality, production metrics, generated new business for cell development. So let's go over to the Google Scholar pages for these uh, interesting people that now work at Tesla that came from Shirley May. Let's do a quick Apple F. Wait, what do we find? Papers with Jeff Don. So not only are these researchers on their resume showing they were in Halifax, Nova Scotia, but they've actually published, published joint research with Jeff Don. And it's not just um, that, it's both employees, Sunny High and Christopher Fell. If we go to his uh, Google Scholar and do a, a quick search for Jeff Don too, we can find two papers with Jeff Don. Volume, pressure, and thickness, evolution of lithium ion pouch cells with silicon composite negative electrodes. Operando X-ray diffraction study of polycrystalline and single crystal. I don't know what I'm talking about here, but the point is Jeff Don was a co-author on these papers. So it, th there's so many connections here. You can read these papers if you want. I'll put all the links. We have um, this, but it, this is this is the evidence here. Jeff Don, Christopher Fell, Jeff Don, Sunny High, Christopher Fell, Jeff Don, Sunny High. So. Uh, to sum it all up, we have Shirley Meng, this researcher who was contracted um, working with Maxwell Technologies to commercialize their DBE technology for a next generation lithium ion cell. Their alumni of her lab are now all going to work or publish papers with Jeff Don, but then are being hired by Tesla to do new cell engineering. Okay, now let's keep it going. Let's talk about that Battery 500 consortium I mentioned. Basically, this DOE-sponsored consortium to figure out how to get the specific energy of 500 watt hours per kilogram compared to the 170 to 200 watt hours per kilogram in today's typical electric vehicle battery. I think Tesla's at about 260, but the point is there's this consortium, academic consortium, founded, funded by the DOE to try and look into doubling the energy density of batteries. Two key players in this group that I want to highlight, U University of California, San Diego, Shirley Meng, University of Texas, Austin. Why does University of Texas, Austin matter? Because that is where John Goodenough and his team commercializing the glass electrolyte are doing their work. Now, I Googled a bunch of Googling. I don't know if I was supposed to find these or not. I'll put links, but I found these PDFs which basically talk about the progress of the battery consortium on trying to figure out how to get this next generation ba battery to market. They talk about the keystone project number one, electrode architectures. 
University of California, San Diego, continued evaluation of thick electrodes fabricated by Maxwell Technology using a dry electrode process. A study, a study utilizing NMC 622 electrodes indicated that reducing electrode porosity improves electrochemical performance. Although the result goes against conventional wisdom, the team speculates this may be due to a more compact electronic conductive network with reduced tertrosity and an electric with lower por porosity. Then, whoops, I'm going to leave that. Then, uh, Keystone Project number three, they continue to talk about it and say a calendar life study on the lithium metal pouch cells containing NMC800 showed little loss in performance over the course of more than six months. I don't know if these are both using Maxwell or not, but I think it's interesting how they keep mentioning pouch cells, um, which I've been hearing a lot of rumors about that the new Tesla battery would be a pouch cell, but I'm not fully convinced. Anyway, if we dive deeper into this report to the part about where they're talking about this Keystone project, you can see that Maxwell is all over it. They talk about how they're using all these different Maxwell technologies and batteries to figure out um, how to make or, or commercialize this, I guess. Let me try and find this for you. Um, so in the cathode work, the UCSD has continued its evaluation of thick electrode by using a dry electrode manufacturing method. Maxwell technology is capable of making nickel rich NMC thick electrodes with very active mass loadings, porosities, and thickness. These electrode properties have an influence on the electrochemical performance of the batteries. And so, I don't know, this is frankly way, way over my head, but you can see Maxwell's uh, DBE process and technology is all over this uh, test that Shirley Meng was doing uh, to commercialize this, you know, 500 watt hours per kilogram battery. Anyway, let's go to the next report that came out three weeks later. If I do an Apple F for Maxwell, nothing comes up. They've stopped mentioning Maxwell. Was that, and what's interesting about that is that's almost right at the in-between moment of where that original grant got announced, September 14th, 2018, 2.5 million to like commercialize or expand this work. So just to try and sum everything up, because I just threw so much stuff at you, um, th this is what I think is happening right now. We have four players, five players, in this, in this situation, we have Shirley Mang, we have Tesla, we have Maxwell, we have Jeff Don, we have John Goodenough. How are they all connected? What are they working on? Are there several battery breakthroughs? Is it lithium ion cells? Is it pouch cells? Is it glass electrolyte? I have no idea, but I'm speculating. And here are the facts that we know. September, 2018, Shirley Mang was actually awarded a grant to work with Maxwell Technologies to commercialize their DBE. She's part of this Battery 500 consortium, which John Goodenough lab or team seems to also be a part of. And they were working on using Maxwell's dry electrode to really commercialize and get that 500 watt hours per kilogram battery. Additionally, if you go look at the slides for Maxwell Technologies investor presentations at the time, they say that DBE was being validated, could go up to 500 watt hours per kilogram, but was being validated at 300 watt hours per kilogram now, which basically lines up with the timing and tests that Shirley Meng's lab was doing. So it looks like Shirley Meng was in charge of commercializing the DBE technology for Maxwell Technologies. So then when, and even before Tesla acquired Maxwell, people from uh, like, I guess, advisors and you know students of Shirley Meng were being poached by Tesla or hired by Tesla to work on next generation battery cells. Then Tesla acquires Maxwell and it seems like is investing full force into this project. But what is the relationship between Shirley Meng and the newly acquired you know, Maxwell Tesla? I don't know. But the other thing that we have to include in this is we do know that Jeff Donna's paper is going back to 2016 and 2017, working with people in Shirley Meng's lab or people affiliated with her on commercializing next generation lithium ion cells. So uh, it's clear that Maxwell and Shirley Meng were working together. And it's clear that Shirley Meng and Jeff Don were either working together or working very closely together, um, trading students or advisors because, um, you know, the two students on her resume who work at Tesla both seem to be on papers with Jeff Don. So there's a clear collaboration between Meng and Don. Maxwell was trying to get Meng to commercialize DBE. Uh, and so how does this all tie into John Goodenough? Uh, John Goodenough, the only clue I have that he is, his breakthrough is involved in all of this is that my friend who was an investor at Maxwell told me that the Maxwell CEO said that Shirley Meng was working on good enough stuff, which means that Don was working on good enough stuff too, which means that Tesla's breakthrough is actually somewhat based on good enough's technology if it worked. I don't know. This is just more speculation, um, just a million ideas out there. And I'm really putting this episode out because I'm only like halfway through my research and I don't know where this is gonna take me, but I need your help. I want people who are way smarter than me, who actually understand batteries to go check out all these papers. I'm gonna to link to below where they have the Shirley Meng Tesla cell materials researcher working with Jeff Don. What are they researching? Does it line up with the breakthrough glass electrolyte that good enough talked about? Please let me know. Anyway, I think this is so, so fascinating. Um, I hope to make another update soon. Keep in mind, this is all speculation. Everything could be totally wrong, but
But uh, that's what's fun, that we're just guessing and trying to figure this out and crowdsourcing all this information on the internet. It's been amazing. Huge thank you to all the people watching and commenting. Um, also, even bigger shout out to the HyperChange Patreons supporting and funding this channel. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.